Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Masoud Odia, and I'm a professor in School of Engineering here at Ventford Institute of Technology. And I'm again back with um, a problem where it's related to belt friction. So in many cases, you have a, um, a cable or a belt going around the pulley or a surface. And then, you know, in the past, we always assumed that if you have a cable going around a frictionless pulley, let's say, right? So this is one cable. The tension on each side of this cable should be the same. So if the tension here is T, over there should be T, provided that there's no friction or minimal friction. So what happens if there is friction? Is tension going to be the same going around this uh, uh, pulley uh, or surface? And the answer is no, the tension is going to be different. In fact, uh, one is going to be called T1 and T2. And T1 and T2 could be significantly different. Um, uh, so, And that depends on how much friction you have in this surface. And by the way, which one is T1 and which one is T2? T1 opposes the direction of motion. So you see these forces that you see here. So this guy is actually moving this way, let's say, right? So it's either in a static or it's actually rotating and moving, going around the pulley, right? So in either case, uh, tension one opposes the uh, direction of motion. So T1 opposes the direction of impending motion or the direction of motion, okay? So that's how you figure out which one is T1, T2. Now, this angle, angle of contact is very important, usually denoted by angle beta. Don't pay attention to this theta. This is actually a picture that you use to do the derivation, the relation between these two tension. So now it turns out that, and if it's a coefficient of static friction is mu s or coefficient of kinetic friction is mu k if it's moving, it uh, doesn't matter. We just call it mu, right? Uh, then what's the relation between these two tension? It turns out that the ratio of tension T2 to tension T1 is equal to E to the power mu times beta, okay? So it's an, an, an important equation, which will tell you how much tension differs. So T2 then, say if you have T1, for example, well, it doesn't matter if you have the other tension, the relation is T2 is T1 times e to the power mu times b. Mu is the coefficient of friction, and beta is the angle of contact. Be careful, guys. B must be used in radians. So if you have 90 degrees of, uh, of um, contact, that means pi over 2. If it's the entire, uh, you know, 180, that's pi. Okay, so that's one thing to remember. So let's use this equation now to do a problem. So in the next page, I have a problem here for you that we can look at. Here we go, this is our problem. So it says uh, the simple uh, band break is constructed so that the ends of the friction strap are connected to the pin, right, at A. Uh, and lever arm at B, right? So this cable is connected to A and B. If the wheel is subjected to a torque of 80 pounds per foot, you see that the direction of motion is what then? The impending motion is this way. Uh, I'm sorry, it's this way, um, even though the torque is acting on it because we are pulling it down with the force P, right? So this should be then the tension T1, right? And this should be tension T2, okay? Based on what I just showed you a minute ago. All right, so, uh, so it says determine the smallest force P, so force P is unknown here, uh, so that the lever, uh, the, to, to the lever that is required to hold the wheel is stationary. So this is not actually moving, but the impending motion is clockwise. All right, that's why we pick T1 to be in the opposite direction of motion. The coefficient of a static friction, so here the static friction is important between the strap and the wheel is 0.5, okay? 
So let's go ahead and solve this problem. So what you need to do is to, first of all, establish the relation between T1 and T2, and also try to find one of them so you can have the other one. So let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram of this wheel. Remember, this wheel is stationary at the center. So if that's point O, we do have reaction OX and OY, right? Like a pin. We do have a torque, which is 80 pound foot. Careful with the unit. And keep in mind, guys, that we have tension T1 as shown here and tension T2 right there. All right. So first of all, let's go ahead and take a moment about O. If you go ahead, take a moment about O uh, and pick counterclockwise as positive, which is actually the direction of this moment. So I start with the 80 pound foot moment. And then see the, the um, moment of T2 is T2 going clockwise times uh, the, the radius, which is 1.25, right? And then the tension of the, the moment of tension T1 is going to be positive uh, times also 1.25, and that's it, equals zero. So actually, in this equation, you have uh, T1, so T2 minus T1, if you change it, would be 80 divided by 1.25, right? So uh, what is 80 divided by 1.25? Let's check. 80 divided by 1.25 is 64. So here's one equation. T2 minus T1 should be 64. All right. Now I'm going to go to that equation, guys, that we were talking about. Sorry. I accidentally moved this guy over here. So let's go up and take a look at... Oh, gee, everything just keeps moving. All right, let's put this back where it was. All right, so what was our equation? You see this? T2 is equal to T1 e to the uh, power. Let me just do a few of these. So we have what we're supposed to have. There we go, guys. Sorry for mess up. So T2 is equal to T1 e to the power mu beta, right? So this will, will give us another um, relation, right? And together with this equation, we should be able to find T21. See, after we find T21, then we can look at the free body diagram of this uh, lever, right? But be careful, guys. Mu is given to be 0.5, no problem. But beta is the angle of the contact. So look at that. We know that we have 180 here, a 45 and a 20. So your beta, is 180 plus 20 plus 45. So that's 245 degrees. But conversion of pi radian is 100 degrees, right? So you could do that conversion, whatever that is. We can actually put it in the equation. So T2 is equal to T1 e to the power 0.5 times beta in radians, which is 245 over 180 times pi. Guess what? If you do that um, e to that power, T2 becomes uh, 8.48, be exact, 27T1. So here's one equation. Here's another equation, just substitution method. Solve for T1 and T2. Uh, T1 comes out to be equal to. 8.553 pounds, that's a tension T1, and tension T2 similarly would be 72.553. See the difference, T2 minus T1 is what, 64. So here we go. You got the tension T1 and T2. What good is that? Now you're able to draw the free body diagram of this guy and solve for P. So let's go ahead and draw the free body diagram. Let me not move it too far down so we can see the picture at least here. So this is the load P that is unknown, right? Remember the tension T2 now, it's gonna act like this. I mean, know what tension T2 is, right? And you do have reactions here, AX, AY, and you also have tension T1 here. 
But the good news is that they're gonna take moment about point A. This is tension T1, right? Only tension T2 is important to us. By the way, knowing that this angle is 45, right? This angle would be 45. So you have that angle. So go ahead and take moment about A, and you can solve for P. Because the, the two unknowns are, the three unknowns are P and what's happening at A. So by taking moment about A, let's say we take counterclockwise to be positive, right? So what do we have? We have T2 sine 45. You, remember, T2 you already know is 70. 2.553, right? Times what distance? This distance. Let's see, what is that? That's uh, two, I didn't do a good job by the way in terms of dimension, but that's two feet in the picture, right? And that's going positive and then P times looks like, uh, I'm sorry, that's 1.5 G. And then P times what? 4.5, right, about A. Plug in for um, the uh, T2, as I said, 72.553, and you solve for the load needed to keep this stationary. You need 17.1 pounds load to be applied to what? To that handle, to the end of that handle, to keep this stationary. So I think this gave you an idea how you handle the belt frictions, you know, in general. Okay. Thank you for watching, listening. As always, if you like the video, uh, please uh, uh, press that button, like button, and then uh, you can also, you know, subscribe. And I'll always come back with different videos on different topics. Thank you, guys. I'll see you soon.